Hello, this is Janet Gallen welcoming you to Love Letters Live. And today's guest, <clears throat> excuse me, is an actress, Donna Russo, who really has a great deal to say about a great many things. So Donna, I'm just going to go right to you. And maybe for starters, although we're going to move away from there temporarily, what is the name of your um, movie or the show that you're doing? It's a sequential, a series, right? Yes, it's a YouTube series created um, by Peggy Lane and executive produced by her. And it's called Donna on the Go. And okay. it's a wonderful, lighthearted view on the challenges you go through um, with disabilities. Perfect. Okay, because I am so much of another generation that when you say it is a, a YouTube series, I never think of that right away. But that's become very important. Okay. Yes. It's a web series. A web series. Thank you. And people can find it by going to YouTube and clicking on Donna on the go. Yes. Exactly. Okay. May we start right in with you because I know that you've reached a great deal of success with this and when, you know, and then you've, you've done this overcoming some challenges, things that would be challenges to others, but I'm a little bit in the dark about challenges because they seem overcomable. When, what is your particular disability challenge? And when were you first aware of that? And I'm asking this because I think it will be helpful to people. Okay. Um, Janet, I have two disabilities or two conditions, I call them. Uh -huh. um, that makes more sense than disabilities. Yes. I, I have Turner syndrome. What is that? And I also have um, FSH, muscular dystrophy, dystrophy, and they're two different um, conditions and they are unrelated. Oh, well, they are? So, okay. Yes. What was the are. first so, one? I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Turner syndrome is, um, happens in women um, and it has to do with the um, X chromosome. Either it, it's... Uh, part of the X chromosome is incomplete oh. or missing. Uh -huh. And I, I am not a doctor on this, but <laughs> I would, um, I would recommend that people go to, F, uh, go to Turner syndrome.org. Okay. And uh, learn more about it because I appreciate you're saying that because the more we learn about everything, and is that something that the two that affect you, are those something that showed up later in your childhood? I mean, at what point does this show up? Okay, well, Turner, Turner showed up. In women. Yes, in women. That showed up very early. Oh, it did. Um, however, it wasn't diagnosed until I was maybe about 10. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I'm a four foot five in uh -huh. uh, stature here. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. Um, my parents wanted to look into, um, you know, my height and why was I so small? But parents wouldn't know about that right away. That takes a few years to notice, right? Right. So when I was about maybe, I guess, five, five-ish, oh, I, I don't really know, um, they would take me to the doctor to see an endocrinologist to see, um, what was going on with my height. Mm -hmm. And then they didn't know a lot about it. Um, and then I was diagnosed later. They took a lot of tests, um, blood tests and um, skin graft to see what was the, uh, what was making me small. I see. Okay. And the other, the other condition, <clears throat> I think it's nice for parents to know when to start looking at things. Yeah. Um, the FSH really hit me, um, l later in life. Uh -huh. Like I was, I was fine with my muscles, you know, and then like, I took dance classes all throughout my life and, um, there was never any, anything that, um, I would think mm -hmm. would be a problem. But now looking back, I couldn't whistle. You couldn't whistle. Um, when I, I couldn't whistle huh. when I was um, in grade school for 
a, a Christmas play. I was a uh-huh. doll and I couldn't whistle. And I didn't think anything of it. Come to find out that um, FSH, muscular dystrophy, which robs your muscles slowly, um, has facial weakness, um, shoulder weakness, scapular weakness, and um, it can affect your legs as well. And um, I just thought I couldn't whistle, you know, (laughs) didn't pay any attention to it. You took took dancing lessons. No, I danced through throughout my whole life. I have a BA in dance from Mercyhurst University. Really? Yes. That's wonderful. And I danced on tour with Alvin and the Chipmunks and the Magic Camera, uh-huh. which I played Alvin. And uh, really how, old took- you, how old were you when you did that? Uh, Alvin and the Chipmunks. I mean, I remember that from my childhood, but. 26. Oh, so you were a grown woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was a dancer. I was touring and I did some music videos and, um, you know, I didn't think anything uh, about my muscles, you know. Good for you. And, what, um, what was your parents, how, how did your parents respond to your needs at this point when you were young and first diagnosed? Oh, well, we followed up with doctor's appointments with an endocrinology, uh, an endocrinologist. <laughs> who knows about these things. And um, when I was diagnosed with Turner syndrome, then he knew what it was. And- uh, Well, I'm, I really meant, <clears throat> excuse me, I really meant emotionally, like in, in encouraging you and what, oh, did, what did they do right? They um, supported me. And my dad was always, you know, just get your mind focused on what you want to do. And um, just don't listen to people making, teasing you about being small. Just go for what it is that you want to go for and use your brain, show them um, what you can do. And it was very encouraging. My mother also always taking me to dance classes. We, I played the piano for a while. Uh-huh. Um, a little while and then I, I wanted to dance so and, okay I saw I saw one of your Donna on the goes where you were da- was that a Don no that wasn't a Donna on the go I saw something else where you were dancing mm-hmm. and I, I just remember the photograph of you stretching backward who are you dancing with in that video um did you see did it have a cane in it no uh did it have a bench in it you know what? I'll have to look. Were there several? Well, I did dance um, with a wonderful, phenomenal dancer, um, Scott Kislop. Uh huh. And that was um, on a dance with a bench. And also, I, I, I think danced... you were. I thought you were in a wheelchair. Um, but I could be wrong. I was so busy watching your motions that I might not have paid attention to where you were sitting. Okay. Okay, that could have been a trailer that choreographer Tam um, Warner oh, uh-huh. had made for, uh, we did a video video with a lot of dancers. Um, so you, and, always, you always knew you wanted to be a dancer, evidently. Oh, uh, yeah. And you never got dissuaded from, that's just a wonderful message to be out there. You didn't get, you didn't get dissuaded from that. How did you? I, I did, I did because, um, I went to an audition for Pennsylvania Ballet Uh and uh, they told my mom I was just too little. Okay. So I went home crying and uh, that day my dog had puppies. So I, (laughs) I got in a better mood, but um, (laughs) yeah, I was very discouraged because uh, it seemed like I was not the right height for a lot of things. Um, but then you managed to shift into a different direction where you could still dance. I did. I did. Cause I said there was, there was one way I was going to do it. It was, I was going to do something with it. How did you, well, okay, let's, let's kind of tiptoe up to this. Um, you've got a BA in dance and what did that require? Um, it requires a lot. 
uh, you have to do all of your technique classes, choreography classes, oh. um, dance history, a modern dance classes, a rehearsals at night, and all of your regular subjects like biology, mm -hmm. um, mathematics, uh, English, literature. So everything was combined. And it was the first time that I felt like uh, my school studies were integrated with my arts. Oh, and um, otherwise, I would have to go to school during the day, um, go to dance class, and do my studies. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was harder to fit, you know, it was harder to fit. But in, you know, it's demanding to be a dance major. And I don't know how many people know that, but you've got to keep up with all of your academic subjects as well as your technique classes in dance. Sure. And I would sometimes, you know, you could take as many dance classes as you want, as you had time for during the day. So sometimes you would take two or three classes, depending on what other subjects came involved. And then you would have rehearsals at night or in the afternoon or, uh -huh. so you'd have how to, did, how did it you was tiring. <laughs> I'm sure it is. How did you make the transition to doing, I mean, I'm guessing there's quite a gap of years, although I could be wrong. I should learn to assume nothing. Um, make the transition between this stage of your life and acting. Um, I always loved acting as well. It's part of the dance classes that I grew up taking would have um, in the studio, they had acting workshops. And I always wanted to do that. So I, I did dancing and I did the acting workshops as okay, well. So it, was, it was a natural segue for you. How, let, can we, let's talk about Donna on the go. Because, okay. you know, this is the first time we've met. I mean, we spoke before this. And I went right to YouTube and watched some episodes. Mm -hmm. And tell us what the premise is and what your motivation is. Because I have a few things to say, but go ahead. Okay, well, um, the first time we decided to do something was a target run. And um, Peggy said, that's just, you know, fil film how difficult it is for you to reach things. And oh. sometimes on the cart, you your weight doesn't register and you have to sit forward but then that cart doesn't go and the electric cart oh i saw that it's back and you bump into things and you know it's not easy for you even to go grocery shopping and it's she wanted to to film it and so we did and she did it because she wanted to make me laugh originally <laughs> and also uh when we went home we did laugh and she she had done the camera work um, coming down the aisle, and she's really good with movement with the camera too. And she said, "I think we got something." So, <laughs> you know, so you just um, took it from there. What you know, I saw you took it from there. Well, I saw two episodes. I saw that one, but then I went and saw two Donna on the go. And the first one, I want to tell you, had me just, you know, growling. That was a true story about that man who shoved his way into the elevator ahead of you? Um, well, that was... I mean, you've that had a was not, That was not a true story. The okay. one about the elevator and the guy with the trash? Yes. Yes. No, there was not, there was not um, a guy okay. who did that to me. But... I'm always having to wait for the elevator and you know how elevators do get out of order. Yes. And that happens, but also you do have to wait for people in the elevator and sometimes people are not very nice. Well, that's what, okay. That's what I was interested in because that yeah. was the, kind of the premise of this one is how flat out rude people can be. Um, some people, yes. Some people are nice. Right. Right. But you know, I, w I was struck by the fact that, when you see somebody who's obviously facing a challenge that others are not, and that you're, you've just got to go out of your way a little extra to be helpful. Yeah, that would be nice. Like open the door, 
or somebody in a wheelchair or somebody that's assisting you in a wheelchair they can't i see oh, a lot right. of times you know trying to open the door and, and push me in right um Peggy you, can't, has a hard you time. can't be in the back of a wheelchair and reach the door with enough force to open it of course exactly yeah and if someone sees that sometimes they don't think i don't think they really truly mean to be you know upsetting or rude but right. sometimes i know i myself did not think about what it was when i when i had my mobility and everything sometimes you just don't think about it but i always hold the door for someone you know yes, yes. Um, I, you know I, I was i was raised with that also i mean there was a very specific instruction and i'm yeah. a lot older than you are so but maybe that doesn't matter um that when you go through a door a public door of any sort you look behind you to see if anyone is coming mm -hmm. and then you hold the door open for that next well you know i i have been struck by the fact that i have had the door just let go in my face more than a few times with people who weren't taught that yeah it's amazing okay so that's parental lack of education yes. yeah it's just nice to be you know, it's, it's just nice to be thoughtful. Yeah, try to think about these things. By know? the way, it's nice on both ends. It's nice on your end. You feel good when you're being thoughtful. And it's very nice for the other person. What about the other episode that I saw? The man who carried you to the car? Oh, that did happen. Did it? Can you tell us yes. about that? That did happen. I was going to a rehearsal. Um, Tam, Warner, the choreographer, had or we, we rehearsed. And so I was going to rehearsal, but the elevator door was out of order. And that my car um, is in the garage and got to take the elevator to go down. And I could not get there because it was like, how am I going to get there if the elevator's broken? I can't you go were down. Walker the at that point? Uh, walker. You were at a walker? Pardon? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get to my car? So yes, there, there was a neighbor, um, angels <laughs> at that point who did um, actually get me down the ramp and my walker and to the car. So yes, that, that was based on a true story for sure. It was a very nice story. What's, what's the most difficult thing that's happened in your life? Um, the most difficult thing that happened was FSH uh, takes away your strength, your muscular strength slowly. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you lose being a dancer, when losing oh, sure. your range of motion, it's very hard. It's very upsetting. And you just don't know what, you know, you don't know, like, how am I going to fit? fit my passion in how am I going to fit dancing and I still want to do it you know and so facing the fact that I was going to have to adapt mm -hmm. and make some changes um really was hard but somehow I had in my head that I was gonna still I had still had a, a voice with dance and I still wanted to do it yes so having so, a passion really did help. Yes, and then and then I I met Tim, Pam Warner, who um, I took one of her workshops, her dance workshops, mm -hmm. and um, then we had like a session where we did a certain. Um, she had exercises where you write, and also you dance, and and uh, she had the idea to. Um, you know, how is it that you can move your arm now, you know, and um, I showed her and then we came up with some choreography. How nice. she, she came up with choreography to uh, kind of extend in, um, extend my movement mm -hmm. to show. And, and what is it in your in your Donna on the go? What is it that you want people to come away with that you want people to learn? about you, about having to um, 
you know, be successful despite a disability that might prevent others? I think that both Peggy and I, if Peggy does things through comedy, but I think that um, taking a lighthearted view and not being depressed about it mm -hmm. all the time, because it's no joke. Right. This is for sure. It's no joke, but um, you want to show that <clears throat> I'm still doing things and um, somehow I will, I'm adapting and somehow people do adapt. Human <laughs> beings, we do adapt. You know, I have, I have a friend named Alan Klein whose profession is self named he's a jollytologist and he teaches people how to live through enormous challenges and you know whatever they are i mean sometimes they're physical sometimes they're financial sometimes they're emotional whatever it is his attitude is you can't ruin my day and there is there is kind of a i, I want you to say what you think about this that being able to laugh at yourself or at somebody else does not disrespect the pain. It's Would true. You? Yeah, it's true. You're allowed um, to laugh. Oh, people say, how can I laugh at a time like this? Or how can you laugh at a time like this? The answer is you can. Because okay. you've always, I mean, there is a certain dealing with the challenge that you have, and there is a certain I'm, like I said before, it's no joke. Right. So you're faced with that every day, but you have to kind of look and you have to kind of not spiral downward is what I'm trying to say. So all the condition is also the, although the condition is certainly no joke, there no. are funny moments embedded within everybody's life. And that you get to recognize yours and laugh at it is such a blessing. Yes. At least a little, uh, at least a little bit, but you know, other people may feel different. Sure. But for me, uh, for me, spiraling downward is not the way I think I want to go. Oh, it can't be helpful for anyone. Let no. let me ask you something because you know I am about love letters. Mm -hmm. Are you a letter writer at all? I I don't know if that's difficult for you. I write uh, poems. I write poetry. Oh, uh, a few poems, let uh -huh. me just say that. And um, uh, as far as letters, letter writing, now I think it's more taking the form of poetry now. That's lovely. Do you ever send them to somebody, to friends, or like in an envelope with a stamp? No. Okay. No, I, I let people read them. Mm -hmm. um, I let people read them. Yeah. Well, if, if you were to write, sending. if you were to write a love letter, and I use that term broadly, you know, any kind of love, lust, thanks, appreciation, memories, anything that is essentially about the other guy, if you were to write one of those letters right now, to whom would it be? Are your parents still with us? No, and I, I think that's who I would write too because they um they are not physically here right and uh yeah i think it would be them i also have a lot of friends and people that i just am so appreciative of who've helped along the way you know i, um, I always think that if you have a nice thought about somebody it's kind of a pity to let it go unspoken and how wonderful yeah. it is to take a little piece of paper write it down and stick it in the mail and the result, That's a lovely idea. I hope you might do it. Yes. And by That's, the way, yes, I um I would like to, you know, now give my appreciation to all the people, um, that work with us on Don on the Go to Peggy Vince. Oh, so you've um, got a lot of people you can write to. Yes, you can write a whole series one at a time. Greg Hutchison. I could write a ton of love letters. Oh, good. I hope <laughs> you do. Yes. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing to receive. Have you ever received 
friendship letters in the actual mail that you can remember? Yes. Okay. Do you still have them? I I do. I might have a few tucked away in my security box. Oh, good. That's people tend to keep them. And I have I have something to say about all this because mm -hmm. when you, the letters that you write, in particular now at this stage of your life, where you've succeeded in something that you have wanted to succeed at, and there are so many people, and this is your own history written in your own hand. And it's just so worth it. People won't throw those letters away. And also, we really live in miracle times because you can, you know, write it out on your computer or make copies of it, and you get to keep copies of everything you send. Yes. So, you when know, you're... you've given me a great idea. I, I should do more of that. You're right. Oh. We should do more of that. It, by the way, and it feels so good. And writing to your parents who are no longer here, I've done that. There is something about writing to someone you love. And it, it brings them right back into your presence. And I've seen people, maybe you, well, this will make sense to you anyway, <laughs> write people, write letters to people who are ill or have just passed on. And they're, they're sad, they're grieving, they're bereft. And as they're writing, you can see a smile crossing their face and the breathing getting easier because you're bathing in the positive. Okay, thank you for doing this with me. I hope you write all those letters. I can just imagine the smiles on the faces of people who see it in the mail. Yes. Oh yeah, I mean, I, you actual, know, actual letters in a, an envelope into the mailbox. It's an art that should come back <laughs> for sure. Well, you know, yeah, people say that it's a lost art. The truth of the matter is it isn't a lost art. It's just in the hands of fewer of us. And, and those of us who choose to write letters to people are doing it just really out of a desire to do that. Okay, maybe sometime in the future, we'll be in touch and you'll tell me how that worked out. Oh, I'd love to. Okay, okay. <laughs> I look forward to our talking again. And as I yes, said, thank, thank you. you. And, and thank you for explaining some of the details of success yeah. over, you know, I, I like when you say, I say condition myself. Mm -hmm. rather than disability i mean yes I, I think that is such a smart choice people have a little trouble with what to call things yes okay thank you dear I thank you forward, so much janet I look forward to talking to you again and goodbye before we say goodbye actually let's just say and remind people that it is very easy to go to youtube and put in donna on the go and and have the joy of your episodes how many have you done we have done 19 episodes and there's a lot of um there's a lot of other material in there in the videos and what is helpful if they would subscribe so that yes people can see that there is an audience for this type of um for this type of show right. and topic I, but by the way, speaking of your audience, I imagine that it would be huge, not only parents who have children coming up with conditions that are difficult to deal with, but people themselves, such as you, who want to know, you know, how do I succeed despite what might be keeping others back? And people like me who just want to see success and are interested in people's journeys. So the audience isn't limited to one kind of person. Right. Okay. All right, everybody. Exactly. Donna on the go, YouTube. You'll have a wonderful, uplifting time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>